Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Nafi Sarushi, Associate Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Adin Women's Medical College. Welcome to our online session. Our today's topic is Variations in Drug Response. So, let's get started. In this topic, uh, we will discuss drug synergism and antagonism. At first, I want to define what is drug synergism. When the net effects of two drugs are greater or equal to the sum of their individual drug is called drug synergism. That means individually a drug produce response and when two drugs or two or more drugs that individually produce response and uh, when they combinedly act if their action is same or more than equal this is called the drug synergism. It is two types. Number one summation and number two is potentiation. Now what is summation? Summation means additive effect or addition. When the effect of two drug is equal to the sum of their individual drug effect, it is called summation. Mathematically we can say 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. The examples are aspirin and paracetamol. Both effects are analgesic effect. Aspirin works individually and paracetamol also act individually. But if they are combinedly used, their action is just like 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 and both of them causes analgesia. In the same way, epinephrine and aminophylline also used in bronchial asthma and they causes bronchodilatation in different mechanism. But when they are uh, used together, their action is additive effect. Number three example is magnesium hydroxide aluminium trisilicate. Both are used in uh, peptic ulcer disease and magnesium trisilicate causes diarrhea and aluminium causes constipation. Both of them when used individually, they relieve the peptic ulcer uh, problem. But as a, uh, if they are used combinedly, they also uh, minimizes the adverse effect. Now potentiation. Potentiation means more than summation. That means when the net effects of two drugs are used together, they act more than their individual summation. That means mathematically we can say 2 plus 2 is more than 4. The example, the best example is trimethoprim plus sulfmethoxazole is equal to cotrimoxazole. When they are used individually, they produce um, their action, but when they are used combinedly, they produce more than their individual act. Now, what are the uh, benefits? When trimethoprim is narrow spectrum, sulfmethoxazole is also narrow spectrum. When they are formed like cotrimoxazole, it becomes broad spectrum. On the other hand, they are individually back to static, but when combined, they are back to cetal. Individually, they have the more chance of bacterial resistance, but in case of uh, cotrimoxazole, there is less chance of bacterial resistance. And also, uh, individually, they have to use more amount of drug and as a result, there is chance of more toxicity. But when they are combined, there is chance of less toxicity. Now, drug antagonism. The antagonism is opposite the synergism. When the effect of one drug is can be reduced or abolished by the effect of another drug that is called the drug antagonism. That means one drug produces problems in case of another drug presence. This is three types. Number one, chemical antagonism. Number two, physiological antagonism. And number three, pharmacological antagonism. Now I will discuss this latter. Chemical antagonism. When the drug antagonizes the effect of another drug by simple chemical reaction, this is called the chemical antagonism. What are the examples? Examples are like uh, antacid uh, causes neutralization of acid. You know that during peptic ulcer, uh, our uh, stomach causes excess release of the hydrochloric acid. And uh, if we give antacid, it contains the alkali and there is chemical reaction and neutralization of the gastric acid. Heparin is an anticoagulant drug and if it is negatively charged and if its dose is excess then we have to give protamine sulfate which is positively charged. This negative and positively charged causes chemical reaction and neutralizes the adverse effect. Okay? Now physiological antagonism. 
Physiological antagonism is when a drug antagonizes the effect of another drug by acting on two different receptors. Please um, mention it. Um, two different receptors is called physiological antagonism. The examples are like acetylcholine, you know that it is an anti-muscarinic drug. It causes bronchoconstriction. Acetylcholine acts on the muscarinic receptor and lungs it causes bronchoconstriction. On the other hand, adrenaline acting by uh, beta 2 receptors, it causes bronchodilatation. So, acetylcholine and uh, adrenaline they both causes bronchoconstriction and bronchodilatation by acting on two different receptors. So, this type of receptor is physiological antagonism. Another example is acetylcholine and adrenaline. Acetylcholine causes vasodilatation in case of peri uh, peripheral blood vessel. On the other hand, adrenaline acts on alpha 1 receptor and causes vasoconstriction. So, they antagonize the action of one another by acting on two different receptors like acetylcholine uh, acts on muscarinic receptor and adrenaline acts on alpha 1 receptor. Now, pharmacological antagonism. The difference with the physiological antagonism is that they act on the same receptor. I am giving the definition when a drug antagonizes the effect of another drug by acting on the same receptor, it is called the pharmacological antagonism. The examples is acetylcholine and atropine. Acetylcholine causes meiosis in our eye but um, atropine causes mitriasis in our people. They act on the same receptor. Which receptor? Muscarinic receptor. As they act on the same receptor, this acetylcholine and adrenaline causes meiosis and um, uh, mitriasis respectively. So, they are pharmacological antagonism. And uh, again, another example can be given, adrenaline and phenoxybenzamine. You know, phenoxybenzamine is irreversible alpha blocker and adrenaline causes vasoconstriction by acting on alpha receptor and phenoxybenzamine also which is an alpha receptor causes vasodilatation. They both antagonizes the action of one another by acting on the same alpha receptor. So, this is the difference between pharmacological and physiological receptors that physiological receptors acts on the different receptor and pharmacological antagonism acts on the same receptor. This is two types, number one competitive and number two non-competitive. Competitive's another name is surmountable and non-competitive's another name is unsurmountable. What, what does it mean? Surmountable or competitive means when the agonist bind with a receptor, if an antagonist also given, then um, the antagonist reverse the action of the agonist. And if we increases the amount of agonist, the agonist antagonist cannot work. That means if we increases the dose, it can be changed and this is called the competitive. That is there is a competition between the agonist and antagonist. And non-competitive is that there is no competition, there is no chance of increasing the dose. Once a receptor is blocked by an agonist, the antagonist cannot be, cannot do anything in that receptor. Now, another thing that is tolerance. Tolerance is a term, it is a process of developing decreased drug response after a repeated and continuous administration of drug. Sometimes we, uh, we know from our uh, family members or neighbor or relatives that they, um, they take a sleeping pill every night but they uh, do not act now, now it is. That is uh, the main reason of tolerance. It can be two types, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic. Pharmacokinetic tolerance, it can be uh, um, example of the sleeping pill like phenobarbiton and pharmacokinetic tolerance can be the problem in case of absorption, in case of distribution. It may decrease the absorption, in case of distribution there may be any problem in case of distribution, the drug may bind with the plasma protein or um, problem may be in the metabolism or excretion also. There may be um, decreases the enzymes as a result metabolism is not occurs and also in excretion level it excretion may be increased also. Then pharmacodynamic tolerance in uh, here the problem is in the receptor. The receptors numbers may be decreased, receptor sensitization may be may be problemized or there may be down regulation of receptor or there may be post receptor mechanisms problem. And the examples of tolerance is phenobarbiton, morphine, pethidine etc. Now, the features of dependence, here there is overpowering desire of the patient to take the drug. They becomes very uh, eager to take the drug, without this drug, um, he says that he is not fit. 
uh, and also there is tendency to increases the drug and there is physical and psychological dependence also he is um, physically dependent to the drug he feels that he is not well uh, without that drug and there is detrimental effect to the uh, body and also to the society because um, by taking these drugs he creates some social problem also and there is withdrawal syndrome is seen the examples are morphine, pethidine, barbiturate, etc. You know that morphine addicted people are socially disturbing, socially they problem many types of nuisance. Now the habituation. Habituation is mild form of addiction. Like uh, we take tea, coffee, uh, etc. Uh, like our habit. Uh, and the features are there is art to procure the drug. Here the person uh, wants to take the drug but the eagerness is not so at, as much as dependence. And tendency to increase of the drug here it also occurs and dependency is only psychic but not physical. There is no physical problem without taking this drug this not happens and there is detrimental effect uh, to the person but not for the society and there is no withdrawal syndrome and the examples are uh, smoking, tea, coffee, etc. Many of us uh, drink uh, this type of coffee, tea, but this is mild type of habituation. So I think you will um, understand clearly about uh, the difference between tolerance, difference between uh, dependence and also habituation. So this is all about our lecture today. Uh, welcome to our next class. Allah Hafiz.